Welcome to vlog 120. I am the audio file barista and in these vlogs I talk about audio coffee and other things that keep me busy. This may very well be the last vlog that I'm making. At the end I will tell you what and why, but for now let's make this one a good one. Let's start with a broad overview because there's all kind of new things that I want to talk to you about. And this is the complete system for those of you who know my system, you've probably already seen some new things. I have a few things that I would like to talk about you, so let's go. So let's start with the obvious. The Ocelias are of course still in my position, but they have been replaced temporarily with this Lin Ninka loudspeaker. This is a 4 ohm, 90 dB sensitivity loudspeaker and according to Lin it requires some 60 watts of power to drive it good. For those of you who follow my channel, you know I have had this for a long time. These are normally in my surround sound setup downstairs and I never was really satisfied with this loudspeaker. Felt like they needed more power to really come alive. So that's what I did. I got myself some more power, which is over here downstairs in this cabinet. And this is the Lin LK 140, 140 watts into four ohms. This thing, I bought it on Marktplatz, which is Craigslist over here. This thing is in perfect condition. The price was lower than you see these things normally on the second-hand websites. There's a few reasons why I wanted one of these. First of all, this is of course played with the wonderful pre-amplifier that I got recently, the Ear 864. So it is not played with a Lin pre-amplifier but the Ear pre-amplifier is made to work with transistor amps as well as tube power amps. And another reason why I wanted this is because people always tell me that these loudspeakers, these LIN loudspeakers, in general LIN equipment works best with other LIN equipment. So I wanted to try out if that has any merit to it. And first impressions is that indeed it does. You know, one of the benchmarks that I'm always using when listening to new stuff is especially about my Ocelia loudspeakers. So when I'm listening to this loudspeaker, I'm always wondering, suppose I had to get rid of my Ocelias, would I be happy to live with this setup, with this loudspeaker? And I've tried these lins with a lot of different amplifiers and I was never satisfied and now for the first time. This is a setup that comes very close to me saying yes, I could do away with the Ocelias and be happy with this Lin LK140 together with this Lin loudspeaker. Now remember, I'm not saying the Lin loudspeaker is as good as the Ocelia loudspeaker. I say, I'm saying this setup, so the Lin loudspeaker the Lin power amplifier and in this case the ear preamp. That is a combination that I could very well live with without the Ocelias. So this is the first thing that I wanted to show you which is the Lin LK140 that I recently purchased. This is a wonderful amplifier on my Lin loudspeakers. I am going to show you another setup in a minute and there I preferred the Quad 306 amplifier. So it is about the complete setup and not just one amplifier or one loudspeaker. So let's get to the second setup. And now for something completely different, this loudspeaker that I picked up for a few bucks is almost 50 years old. It has this interesting design feature over here and this is by the LNG Corporation which stands for Luxman and Group. So Luxman had their normal line but I wanted to do something 
more for the people who would buy something from a more art point of view and they created this three-way loudspeaker so as you can see here three-way loudspeaker now this thing is almost 50 years old and it looks like it is still in perfect condition it has a few optical flaws meaning the let me show you this mid-range the finish on the cabinet needs some work it's not too bad but it needs some work and obviously as you can see this is from a smoker's house so the fabric on the frame needs to be cleaned somehow now mainly i bought it because i saw the picture with this thing and i thought what the heck is it and you know what it is nothing it is actually only for looks so if i pick up the other frame so let's turn it around as you can see this is just a feature to stretch out the fabric inwards they actually made a nice little wooden insert they have this thing it's not even uh, connected with a screw or something it's just loose in there because of the tension it is kept into place but that's my phone now I was thinking maybe just make a video about it play around with it a little bit and then try to sell them on but then I started playing them and you know what I'm going to keep these these things sound amazing there's a lot wrong with them from an audiophile perspective bass control is not too good um, the sound stage is not too precise but man these things are complete fun to listen to they fill up the room with very sweet music and these things are just fun I've been playing around with them and I had some late nights listening to another track and again and another track and another track so I try to play them with a completely you know a vintage setup with this quad and this Nakamichi CR2 cassette deck and this played very nice but the 306 power amp with the preamp from ear that is really a magical combination this thing really is a lot of fun to play with so you can expect a review from this these are um, 8 ohm 40 watt over here i don't know if you can see this front baffle is really this is very very thick this is just to close up the cabinet i think it is a closed cabinet if we look at the rear can you see that well the only problem is they have these push-in connectors that you push in and then you can put your loudspeaker cable into it but these these are so tiny i really did not even have a loudspeaker cable tiny enough you know with the gauge small enough to put in there so these cables they do fit but these connectors are really really small okay so there probably next week will be a sound sample of these boys and i'm going to try and fix this um, because the quality of this fabric it has been stretched for so many years it's not soggy anywhere it is still having nice tension it looks beautiful um, build quality on this thing is really really very nice so I'm trying to go in, clean it up. Probably some plants have been on here. 
going to clean it up and next week I'll have a sound sample uh, for you and uh, the result of the cleaning up will be in an other video. Luxman and Group LNG S25. Here's another thing that I picked up. You already knew that I picked up the 6000 CDT. CD transport some time ago. Very happy with that one. But recently I also run into this streamer from Audiolab, the 6000N Play. And it's not connected at the moment. But this is a recent purchase and this may be something that would be a good streamer CD setup. I'm still looking for the power amplifier. And this might be the next setup for my girlfriend. And the reason for that is because of these six buttons. Under these buttons you can program anything you like. Now my girlfriend mostly listens radio, so she's not so much into streaming. It has been only two years since she had a smartphone and she does not even use the smart part of the smartphone. So having an app on her phone and going from there to play a radio station is not something that she likes to do. Now of course at the moment she has the Noicom analog FM tuner but it is also giving a lot of noise as FM analog radio gives you. So I'm trying to transform her to internet radio and what I did is I programmed her six favorite radio stations under these buttons. She does not need her app uh, or her phone. She just turns it on, picks her station and she's done. I think that will be the best way to transition her from analog to digital. Now I'm not really impressed with the app that comes with this thing, but well, I'm still learning, so it's too early to actually say what I think of it. So this is something that you'll be seeing soon also in the videos. And there's one more thing that I need to talk about. You remember this blue thing in there. That is how I always have set up my system. Of course, now I have these amplifiers over here. And behind this blue stuff was this material. It was an experiment that I did a long time ago to try and make this into some kind of bass trap. But when I measured it, it did not really work. When I listened to it, I thought it made a difference. And I believe ever since I removed it, it does give me a bit more bass than I would like. But as one of you mentioned, this material might not be open structure uh, enough in order to trap the bass. I don't know, I don't have enough knowledge about that, but it sounded pretty well to me. Actually this, when I bought it, this is material that you use when you are building a studio in home, like a box in a box. You put this stuff between the two boxes in order to decouple the inside box from the outside box. So I thought, well, if I'm not using it in here, maybe, I can use it down here, having two layers. And now it is also functioning as what it was made for, to decouple one floor from another floor. So this must be perfect. There's still a little bit of flexibility in there, which is good in my home, because my floor is not concrete. It's actually a bit bouncy. So everything that stops the bounce between floor and the rack is welcome. So this is something that I did and up until now I think this is what is going to stay. So over here I have my other big rack and I still have a lot of this material, this material left. So what I'm going to do is also place that under here now that's going to be a project on itself because this rack especially when it's filled i cannot move it an inch you can see below here i've placed some of these okay i had to pick up 
something. These are just bouncy balls. These are pretty strong and there's a lot of these bouncy balls under the rack, but because it's been so heavy for the last few years, they have been caving and caving and caving and now these balls are almost flat. So I had bought a few more to put under it, but I think I'm going to use this under it because I like this setup. So that is the last thing that I wanted to show you. Now let's get to the announcement and then we'll finish up this vlog. So as I thought at the beginning of this vlog, this may be the last vlog. I've been doing 120 vlogs in this living room. I hope you have enjoyed them, but every now and then you need to change up things. There's a lot of plans that I have for this channel and Having to make this vlog every two weeks was getting in the way of my agenda of making other videos. So for now, I'm going to stop these two weekly vlogs. Every now and then when I feel up to it, I will make another vlog and I'm going to try and make more content this year. I'm trying to make better content this year. The flow of new subscribers at the middle of last year was going very slow. I changed some things. It picked up a little bit, but I think it can be better. And that's what I'm going to try. So I'm trying to keep a schedule to have a video out every Friday. I'm going to experiment some with this new thing on YouTube, which are the shorts. So still something every Friday not a vlog anymore unless I feel up to it and I'm going to do much more uh, reviews much more sound samples I'm going to do these shorts and yeah well every time every now and then you need a change and after 120 vlogs in this little house I was thinking well I don't know what to tell you guys anymore I can also imagine that you have seen it all so let's try something new so please stay following me if this was your first time watching this vlog you had no idea what i talk about just subscribe and you'll be part of all the new videos that are coming up so today is a friday thank you very much for watching this vlog and i'll see you in the next one